Hello everybody and welcome back. Thanks for tuning in to another episode in the series here. My name is Dominic and I'm the host of the Android Factory. I had a wonderful time in Croatia for about two weeks. Made some posts about it on Instagram, so feel free to find me there and you can see what I did. Uh, and we're just kind of getting right back into the swing of things here. So I believe in the last episode we went ahead and implemented this little bottom sheet, sorry, this little bottom navigation view here, hooked it up with our nav graph and um, you know, kind of just set us up for adding more tabs in here uh, and building out the rest of this application. What I want to do today is actually cover uh, the expanding and collapsing of these epoxy recycler views, because if you remember, um, I think I can find it here. Yeah, here it is. So at the bottom of these cards here, there's going to be a description. This data comes back from our API here. We do have it set to uh, gone here um, just to make things simpler. But the idea was that when they click, when the user clicks this card that it should expand and then when they click the card again it should collapse if it was already expanded. Um, so we can go ahead and add that logic in and it's going to look very similar to the idea that we've created before with this UI product using the combine operator with flows to actually go ahead and manage the particular state of all of our elements here whether or not they're expanded or not and that kind of stuff. So let's just go ahead and jump right back into it. So um, as we see here, we have a state flow for the products and a state flow for the favorited product IDs. And then we go ahead and map those into UI products. And uh, this is favored Boolean is set to true or false, depending upon if that product's ID exists in this set, which is what exists inside of our application state here. So what we can very easily do is just go ahead and add in a set of favorite product IDs. Let's do uh, expanded product IDs. Again, it'll be a set of integers. We'll leave it as an empty set. And then uh, we'll have you know, a very similar concept to this here to go ahead and manage our particular UI product. So we can go ahead and add in again. Uh, let's go with is expanded. We have Boolean that defaults to false, looking pretty similar, looking pretty similar. And so jumping back to the creation of this UI product here, we can go ahead and uh, update how we actually create this. And in order to do so, we also need to add a new combine or a new uh, flow in here for combine. So we'll do the exact same thing, map it dot favorite product IDs. And then of course we need to update our parameters, change this really quickly to the expanded product IDs because obviously we don't want to have that twice. We add our last parameter in there and then we can just simply say our is expanded is if the set of expanded product IDs contains the product dot id. All right, yeah, very straightforward. It's basically the same exact logic. We're just storing some content elsewhere. There are other ways that we can do it, but I do like the concept of putting everything in the store because it makes it easy to, uh, you know, look at it from a testability standpoint. It makes it easy to, if we ever wanted to, you know, have like a snapshot of the data and like kind of save that to disk and then, you know, reload the UI from that uh, that snapshot, we can do so very easily and all of our information, including the is expanded or the is favorited kind of concept is already inside there. So we've updated our UI products here with the is expanded. We've then, you know, same as always, distinct until changed as live data, we observe that and then we tell our controller, hey, here are our UI products. So looking into the UI um, product epoxy controller should be pretty straightforward here, uh, mainly looking at this because this section is our empty state here, but uh, as we add in the different UI product epoxy models, we have an on click uh, or like a callback for when the on favorite is clicked. So we're going to have to do something very similar here for the expanded state. All right, so I went ahead and just copied basically the on favorite icon click function, changed a few things around here so that we're modifying the correct data. Um, and so let's just walk through it real quickly. We launch a coroutine scope attached to our view model here. We then call update on the store. We have a, the a reference to our current expanded IDs here, um, fetching it from the store. We just have our simple logic here that says basically if the ID that was selected is already in our set, then we just go ahead and remove it here. We just create a new set with that item filtered out. And then otherwise we add that element to the set, creating a new set. And then we just go ahead and copy update the new um, you know, expanded product ID set. So we can just go ahead and set that to the store. That'll trigger uh, this to go ahead and get updated, which will then trigger our controller to receive new UI products and everything will just kind of fall into place here. The last little bit that we need to do is we need to just go ahead and actually make use of this function and update our little um, 
you know, epoxy controller here or epoxy model here. So we're just gonna very easily use the same syntax. Again, kind of like that function pointer idea on UI product clicked. This will go ahead and attach itself into the constructor of our model here. Again, we are going to send an integer and expect nothing back. And then we just need to set up our UI here. So now we can very easily, I believe there's a, yep, product description text view. We can just set its visibility equal to the UI product dot product, sorry, UI product dot uh, is expanded. And that doesn't really make much sense. Sorry, it's uh, it's kind of my first day back here, but uh, we obviously need an integer. We need some visibility aspect of things. Uh, and, and this is obviously a Boolean. So this would have to wrap in like a if statement. If, if this is expanded, you can do, you know, view.visible or view.gone. Uh, but instead of saying is or visibility equals, we can actually just say is visible equals, and then that kind of does that under the hood, right? So then it'll say visibility of the particular view is going to be visible if the value is true, and then otherwise it'll be gone. And that's exactly what we want, right? Um, we want it to either be present or not present, um, and yeah, pretty pretty straightforward. Outside of that, we can just set an on click listener to the root here, which will invoke our on UI product clicked. And we will go ahead and say UI product dot product dot ID as the integer that we care about. So this should be the overall on click listener. And then this is going to uh, manage the actual UI of displaying, you know, the, um, the description text view or not. All right, and we're coming back here. Everything loads in as normal, looks fantastic. And then as we see here, as we can go ahead and click this particular element, uh, we see that it does expand very, very nicely. The rest of the list moves, moves down. This one moves just a little bit. That one moves enough. Yep, so it just kind of fits properly. It just looks really, really good. And let's see if we have any leaking issues. So the first two will be favorited, or excuse me, expanded. We see that none of these other ones have kind of started to expand and that this is still expanded as we scroll back up. So we are not leaking anything between our particular uh, epoxy models or our recycler views here. We see that we are preserving that information. Even if we go away from the screen and we come back, this is now expanded. And that is 100% the reason why we decided or I decided um, to store that information in the store, right? You leave the screen, you come back, you navigate to a different screen, you leave the application, you come back. All of our actual state is within the store. So we can always just rebuild our UI at any moment in time. This combined functionality really allows us to build out this UI product exactly how we want it. We tell the controller to then display all of our UI products. And very, very simply, all of our information is encapsulated inside of the UI product object itself. So all of this info that we need here directly maps to how we want to build this UI, makes our life a lot easier. We can just build what's called a dumb UI. Um, and, and there's other aspects of the code that will manage updating the actual data behind the scenes. And then the UI is just there to display things according to the data that we pass in. That's about it. I want to keep it a little bit shorter as I'm getting back into the swing of things. So uh, thank you guys for watching. If you made it this far in the video, I'd really appreciate a like. Thank you so much, so much uh, for sticking around. And if you are brand new, please consider subscribing as we continue building out uh, some more features here that'll be a lot more fun, a lot more interesting. Um, and uh, hopefully you learned something. So I'll catch you in the next one. Thanks.